So what we do is we rip this fabric in strips, about two inches, three inches long. I'm gonna start applying it. I'm gonna put some glue on my frame. And then basically wrap it to cover. And also this helps, it makes it softer on your head. But if your frame was a little big, you could wrap extra fabric around it to make that diameter a little smaller, make it snug to fit on your head. And you wanna wrap it kinda of tight. And it's nice to cover up all the electrical tape so when you look from the inside, you don't see it, but you'll definitely not see it once we put the fabric around the outside. So you're gonna to continue to wrap. And then what I do is, once again, glue those intersections where I'm gonna end this piece and add the new piece. So I'm gonna glue this piece off. Opposed to gluing it on the inside of the frame, on the inside here, where it would be sitting against your head, I, I tend to glue it on the outside um, where it will not um, be on your forehead, which would be a little uncomfortable. So I got one piece on. I'm gonna apply another piece now, same thing. I'm gonna stick a little glue and basically just continue to wrap. Now I want to go up over, I'm going to wrap once or twice around my seam where I've added the old piece and the new piece. And pull it nice and snug, keep the wrinkles out. You'll get a few wrinkles in there. Um, I don't think it's a terrible thing. So I've made it over the one section. I'm gonna get this much left. I'm gonna just wrap it around the bottom because I know I have plenty of room so it will fit my head. It adds a little more protection, a little softer on the forehead. I'm at my end. I'm gonna glue that guy off. You get the idea. Wrap the whole frame and I would continue the next piece up and over. So we're gonna, we're gonna continue on. So you have your finished frame. It's all wrapped, most of the seam. You can see very little tape or ash frame. Guy fits nicely on my head. So the next thing, this one has a red covering. We're gonna put black velvet onto this one. So I've got my needle and thread. And I like to start like what's comfortable. So I like this forward. So this would be the back. So I want to start sewing my fabric to the back so the seam would run up the back. But once you apply feathers, you're not going to see the seam anyways. But it's still nice to know that it's back there and, um, you know, it's, it's not going to show. So I'm going to apply my fabric and we're going to sew it to the bottom. And I'm using black thread. You can use any color thread in reality. Um, but the black with the black velvet and the dark frame works nicely. You, just, you don't see the stitches. And let me get this going. All right. 
So I have started, and what we're gonna eventually do is fold this up and cover the frame so that the black velvet will be on top and not looking at the underside. But so if we sew it this direction, we'll achieve that. And then you wanna be about half inch apart on your stitches. And I stitch into the wrapping of the fabric that we wrap the frame with. And there's no exact science as far as the stitching goes, but you wanna be consistent. And if those stitches are a half inch to three quarters of an inch apart, that would work fine. So, a couple of examples of headdresses. The Mohawk had three feathers that would stick up above their head, and you can see that on this one. Seneca was one feather. The Cayuga, the feather laid down the back. Um, the Oneida had two upright feathers and one feather that laid down the back. So those Iroquois people wore a very similar hat. The feathers on top were distinctive of that tribe, and you would be able to tell the tribal members knew who was who um, by the number of feathers in that cap. They were constructed in roughly the same fashion that, you know, we're working on today, and you can, we supply in the kit three dowels, so if you want to make a mohawk style headdress, there is, you can do that, and if you want to make a simple Seneca style with one feather, you can do that as well. Um, all right, so I'm almost around. I'm going to get to this point here, and we'll cut the fabric and sew it up, up the top. need to tie a knot and add more thread. I tied a knot. I'm going to continue to this point here. Both pieces have now met. I've got that. So I'm going to turn this up right. So here's my seam in the back, and I'm going to cut off my excess material. I give myself an extra three inches of material. We can put that aside. So the same thread that we left off, that we wrapped the fabric around the frame, we're going to take it and sew up the back. So basically I'm going to do a baseball stitch, which would go between the two pieces, like so. And remember, you're covering this seam, we'll have You'll have plenty of feathers covering this back seam. Doesn't need to be perfect or pretty. We want it neat and tight. So I'm gonna keep gathering the fabric in as I travel up. tend to take nice wide stitches here. I'm gonna gather that fabric in nice and tight. Just pulling that in tightly. Suck up that space. Yeah. 
Pull that in nice. So I'm going to continue up to the top and then basically gather all the fabric that's still above. So I'm going to do a running stitch right around the top. And those stitches can be roughly, they can be a half inch to an inch apart. And that's just to gather that fabric up. So I'm going to pull the slack out of it. So I'm almost back to my seam where I started. And look at it, it's gathered that fabric up nicely. I have some extra at the top. I'm gonna pull that guy. Now at this point, I still have a fair amount of thread left. I'm gonna just tie a knot here. And still leave my thread attached. So there's my thread, there is my seam. Ah, still fits, we're doing good. So I have a little extra here. I'm gonna carefully snip the top off. We don't wanna cut our thread. Okay, so that's our frame, covered with black velvet. 